so this is a short lecture on uh, differential amplifiers with a current mirror load this is the last part of the differential amplifier chapter so here is the circuit that we'll discuss in this lecture what we've done is instead of the current source load where both m3 and m4 or acting as current sources uh, with a DC voltage applied at their gate. Now we diode connect M3. <coughs> so what that does is whatever DC, well whatever current is flowing in M3 gets mirrored to M4 uh, and so that acts as a current mirror. Also because of this configuration no DC bias is required to be applied at the gate of M3 and M4 and this is an, an advantage of this circuit because in the current source load having a DC bias here that exactly causes the same current as half of the current in the tail current source is a tricky thing because even a slight mismatch in the DC currents will cause one of the transistors to go into triode but here the transistors bias themselves and so this circuit is much easier to design for DC biases. The other advantage of the current mirror load is that the differential mode voltage gain of the circuit is uh, twice that of the current source load as we will see. So that by, uh, by differential gain I mean when the inputs applied are differential inputs the output at VO2 is twice what the output was for the current source load. The disadvantage of this circuit is that its frequency response is poorer. That we shall see when we discuss the frequency response chapter which is chapter 6 that will start after this lecture. Okay, For this circuit I am leaving the DC cases to you as homework. So we have studied DC cases for resistive load for current source load for this mirror load the analyses are similar not the same of course so I'm writing down for, for these DC voltages applied you solve the circuit and find the two drain currents to output voltages and the source voltage uh, remember as we had discussed for the current source load uh, this uh, Considering or analyzing DC cases for small changes in the input voltages is not, it is, it is very unreal because we don't include channel length modulation and so voltages uh, behave strangely without channel length modulation. So generally these cases when the, the difference between these voltages is small are not discussed uh, for DC conditions. Okay, and use these values mu1 c ox w by l uh, both equal to 50 milliamp per volt square and the threshold voltage is the usual 0.4 volts. Let us discuss the AC cases. <coughs> so we apply <coughs> differential inputs plus Vd by 2 here minus Vd by 2 here so that V in 1 minus V in 2 is Vd and we want to find VO1 and VO2. Now at least <coughs> <coughs> excuse me <coughs> at least looking at this circuit it looks like there is no more symmetry in the circuit because one is diode connected clearly the Thevenin's resistance at this node is different than the Thevenin's resistance at this node so let's draw the small signal circuit uh, okay well, okay before doing the small signal circuit let's do a quick qualitative analysis uh, for a differential input voltage. So like we had discussed last time for the current source load, <coughs> if this is Vd by 2 and this is minus Vd by 2, we say, so if this is plus Vd by 2, we say well let us assume that that causes a small signal current Id here then a minus Vd by 2 will cause a small signal current Id that flows up. This is flowing down, this flows up which is basically minus Id. Now in this circuit because this is Id, that Id small Id flows through M3 and M3 mirrors the small Id to M4. 
and therefore the current in m4 is a small id flowing down m2 has a small id flowing up and so at vo2 we have one id coming down and one id coming up all right in the current source load there was only a, a small id coming up in m2 now the first question we ask is well what happens to kcl at this node we have an id coming up id coming down what happens to kcl hmm something to think about isn't it that's because we are cheating by calling these ids so actually when we talk about this id what we are talking about is the gmvg of m1 we are not talking about the current through the ro of m1 this is only the gmvg so we said this is id due to the gmvg of m4 this is id due to the gmvg of m2 and these two currents will flow out into the resistance at this node which is ro2 parallel ro4 right so that's what happens so of course kcl cannot be violated so 2id flows through ro2 parallel ro4 in the current source load circuit only one id was flowing and this is how this two is what gives this circuit twice the gain of the current source load so we can write vo2 as 2id into ro2 parallel ro4 and id we write as gm into vd by 2 and so we get the <coughs> voltage gain of this circuit as gm1 ro2 parallel ro4 this is only a qualitative analysis by the way so this is twice the gain of the current source load circuit what about vo1 vo1 of course will have a different gain and we say well at vo1 we can write if we assume that the source node is at ground and that's an assumption with that assumption we can say just looking at the left hand side circuit that the gain will be vo1 by vo1 equal to gm vd by 2 of m1 into the resistance seen at this node the resistance seen at this node is ro1 parallel ro3 parallel 1 by gm3 because this is a diode connected transistor so the small signal circuit has 1 by gm3 parallel ro3 uh, so i have written this as ro well ro2 is the same as ro1 and this is ro3 and 1 by gm3 all right so this is an, of course usually ro's are much greater than 1 by gm3 so we approximately write the gain as minus gm1 by 2 gm3 so there is very little gain at vo1 from the inputs all right this is a small quantity this is of course a nice large quantity so this is one uh, quality or characteristic of this circuit that the output gains are different and so one cannot of course take the output differentially all right so let's draw the small signal circuit so this is a small signal circuit for m1 gm1 vgs1 ro1 gm2 vgs gm1 vgs2 ro1 ro3 gm3 vo1 and this is 1 by gm3 parallel ro3 and we keep the ro5 because the circuit is not symmetric we do not make the assumption of vs equal to zero all right now i'm leaving the solution of this circuit as homework this gets very tedious you have three nodes and you'll have to write three kcls and solve the three kcls and you should find vo1 vo2 and vs all three uh, i am not solving it in this powerpoint it is just too long but i am writing the answers here which are also are very long all right so this is the answer vo2 by vd is the gm1 ro1 parallel ro3 into this factor so there is a big big factor and the denominator is this big thing which is the same for vo2 vo1 and vs the denominator is the same the numerator of course is different so if, for example if you look at this and if we say if gm ro is much much greater than one then we can ignore the ro's here we can ignore the ones here and the only term the dominating term in the denominator will be r2 ro5 gm3 ro3 gm1 ro1 
and the numerator it will be 2 RO5 GM3 RO3 GM1 RO1 so they both cancel and so approximately the output gain is GM1 into RO1 parallel RO3 the exact gain will be slightly lesser than this quantity because if you compare these two there is a RO here in the denominator uh, which which makes the denominator slightly larger than the numerator but usually one ignores that and for VO1 we get this expression and again approximately VO1 is minus GM1 RO1 by 2 GM3 into RO1 plus RO3 which interestingly is different from the so let's look at the approximate expression we derived so this is minus GM1 GM1 by 2 GM3 uh, even this doesn't match the exact expression all right so the exact expression is actually smaller than the approximate expression but in any case the primary point here being that this gain is very different from this gain this is vs vs is this big expression which approximates to ro1 plus 2 ro3 by 2 times ro1 plus ro3 interestingly or maybe not interestingly it is not zero uh, not interestingly because the circuit is no longer symmetric and therefore one would expect that this will not be zero and it turns out that it is not zero in fact it is closer to one than zero all right so vs is not zero when the uh, load is a current mirror load all right let's find the common mode gain so for common mode gain we say v in one equal v in two equal to some dc plus the same ac applied to both the inputs now if you do a small signal analysis and i'm not doing it i'm leaving it to you as homework uh, so if you just draw the small signal circuits and write kcls at vo1 and vo2 and you subtract them you will find that vo1 is actually equal to vo2 which is interesting so in the common mode the output voltages are equal even though the loads are different at vo1 and vo2 uh, it just so happens uh, and the, the common mode gain again i'm leaving it as homework is this big 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 expression uh, and so that re reduces to minus 1 by 2 gm3 ro5 so if you assume gm RO much much greater than 1 then only this 2 RO5 GM1 RO1 GM3 RO3 term stays in the denominator and half of them cancel so we left with 1 by 2 GM3 RO5 this gain is smaller than the common mode gain of the current source load and the qualitative reason is that the effective resistance of the load is smaller it is 1 by gm3 while for the current source load it was ro3 so for the current source load this was ro3 by 2 ro5 here is because of the diode connection it is 1 by gm3 so this is another advantage of this circuit that the common mode gain is smaller all right Okay, so that is the end of this small lecture. Uh, next lecture, we'll start with the formal beginning of frequency response of amplifiers.